Watch it, smoke it, nigga. What's up, yo? It's your boy, Micah Thomas, aka Mr. Must Be Muscles, aka is cold as shit. I'm sorry I've been away, guys. It's been a crazy ass year, as you know. Been a crazy ass couple months. But I'm back. I'm ready to do it. I'm ready to go. Unfortunately, I don't have a movie review or talk today. But uh, I do want to do something different. You know what I mean? I'm going to pick like 20, 25 movies or so. And uh, just of my favorites out of my collection here. You know what I'm saying? And uh, talk about them, what I like about them. And let's get it popping, baby. All right, so we did that in fast motion, and uh, I was speeding around like crazy. So these are just the movies that I picked that uh, I saw at first that I was like, you know what, that's a good movie. I like that one, you feel me? So starting it off, we got The Rundown, Dwayne The Rock Johnson, Arrow, Oliver Queen, Hitch, Will Smith, Total Recall, the badass version. Colin Farrell, Bench Warmers. <laughs> Come on now. Fast Five, best one in the franchise, best one in the business, in my opinion. King Kong versus Godzilla was lit. Boom! Avengers, Endgame, baby. Alls of them. Bruce Almighty, yo, this is a classic. You can't go wrong with this one. Jim Carrey. Now this one, this one's gonna shock you. This one's gonna shock you. Pluto Nash with Eddie Murphy. <laughs> I'm going to get into that one. We got The Drop, Tom Hardy. Excellent movie. Boom. Power. Best in the business. Stars. Check it out. You got to pay for it. You got to get that going because we're on book two now. Jumper. Great freaking movie, man. Great freaking movie with Anakin Skywalker. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Christian Hayden or something like that. Yo, this Christmas, I watch this every single year, like at least like three times a uh, uh, Christmas season. Freaky Friday, Lindsay Lohan. Probably one of my all-time favorite movies that ever existed. I Spy, Eddie Murphy, Owen Wilson. Hustle and Flow, Terrence Howard. Come on now, you know what I'm talking about. National Treasure 1, 2, doesn't really matter, they're both dope. And last but not least, Fighting with Channing Tatum, which is pretty freaking sweet. Alright, so we're going to go backwards here because I just, I just put them backwards, right? So, Fighting, Channing Tatum. Dude, this movie is like a, an underrated classic in my opinion. Um, Brian White is like the antagonist in this movie and it's about... Uh, you know, a kid, Channing Tatum, he's uh, straight out of, co well, he dropped out of college and um, he moves to New York because you find out later in the movie a bunch of shit happened with his pops and uh, Brian White when they were in college wrestling together. I'm not going to tell you all that. But uh, so he moves to New York, tries to do his own thing, and he ends up spontaneously getting roped into this fighting league, right? Um, you know, fight club type shit, <laughs> but, um, yeah, so he, he gets into this and he starts when he starts making mad money, right? Like mad money. And, uh, then he climbs his way to the top. Brian White's at the top. You know, he's a celebrity. He's the one that's been doing this for a while. Um, and he's, you know, he's, he's well known throughout New York, 
boom, boom. They fighting each other. And Channing Tatum, dude, he, he sub some people, dude, for real. Like, legit. And the fighting style that they shot this in was it was it was different. It was unique. So I like that one. National Treasure. Check this. Uh it's not this one. It's the second one. Um God, I don't even know the dude's name, but if you've seen if you've seen these two movies, in the second one, the older white guy that's the villain, right? He's trying to he's trying to find the treasure and being all snaky and shit towards Nicolas Cage. And uh so my wife actually met this guy at a freaking bar in like South Dakota or something. It was ridiculous. I was like, yo, what? What did you did you ask him you get his autograph napkin or something? I don't know. <laughs> but uh so this movie's great. Um it was the it was the beginning of it, you know. Uh, he's got to steal the Declaration of Independence. I hope you guys are familiar with this movie, cause I mean it's been a while and it's it's pretty classic. You know what I mean? Um, so he steals the Declaration of Independence. He's got to find this treasure. He's a treasure hunter. His whole family's a treasure hunter, and um, he gets his crew together, which is one lady from the freaking like I don't know Federal Reserve type shit for museum, right? For the Declaration of Independence, she works for him. And then this random, like, you know, quirky, dorky dude, um, he's working with him, um, trying to find his treasure, too. So, now we got Hustle and Flow. Badass movie, dude. Badass movie. It's about uh, Terrence, Terrence Howard, and uh, he's, you know, he's a street pimp. He's been doing his thing uh, for years, selling weed, pimping hoes, all that stuff, right? But he has, a, he has an ambition. He has a dream to become... A rapper, right? He meets Ludacris, and Ludacris is a total dick in this movie. Straight up, my sign just fell. But anyway, <laughs> so he 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 tries to hustle his way and, and get into the music business, and uh, you know, ending because I'm just gonna tell you why not. He ends up going to jail, but his song plays on the radio, so bittersweet, right? I Spy, like I said, one of my classic favorite movies ever, dude. The comic duo of these two is fucking phenomenal. And if you haven't seen this movie, which I don't know, it's, it's I don't know, it's freaking, where's it at? Where's it at? 2003. So fucking 17 years. Just watch it, right? It's an old movie, but it's it's great. Um, they're, so Eddie Murphy's a boxer. Owen Wilson's a spy. Secret Service, CIA, whatever. And uh, this lady right here is like his like boss i guess on a mission on a stakeout mission or he's trying to get a stakeout mission which makes for a great comedic joke eddie murphy's a boxer that gets that's like friends with the president george w bush at the time so george the president calls eddie murphy after a fight that he just kicked ass in and says we need you to do a mission and he's like <laughs> yo he's like He's chilling with these girls and, and his boys. And the girl's like, like a secret mission? Like, like 007? Like James Bond? And he's like, yeah, but I'm going to be 009 and a half. You feel me? <laughs> that killed me, dude. That killed me. So they end up, it's an unlikely duo, cop, buddy cop type, type of story. And it's hilarious. Every aspect of it's hilarious. Give it a shot. I spy. <laughs> Freaky Friday. Uh, in relevant history, in modern day you know, from fucking, why I keep looking at these dates and shit, 2003, 17 years ago, so, uh, Lil Dicky just made a song, well, it wasn't just made a couple years ago, but made a song called Freaky Friday, and it was based off of this movie, and uh, him and Chris Brown switch bodies, which, this is what happens in this movie, uh, Jamie Lee Curtis and Lindsay Lohan, Jamie Lee Curtis plays her mother, uh, Lindsay Lohan's mother, and, uh, she's a spoiled teen, you know, going through all her life shit, and they switch bodies, right? At a Chinese restaurant of all places. Ends up for a great comedic talent. Um, it made for a funny story. And I like that Jamie Lee Curtis fully embraced the role of playing like a 16 year old chick. And then they had to end up getting switched back together. And it was a great movie. Great movie. All right. This Christmas, yo. This Christmas. Like I said, I watch this movie three, four times every Christmas season just because I love it. I'm pretty sure everybody in my household gets annoyed with it. But it's it's a freaking phenomenal movie. And I'm black, so it's great to see a black Christmas movie. You know what I mean? 
um, it's all about family. There's a lot of drama in here, dude. There's a lot of drama, but it's really heartwarming. And uh, I still, I still look up like if, if there's a movie with singing and stuff, I like look it up on YouTube and just play it while I'm driving in the car. And Chris Brown's in this movie, so this has an all-star cast, by the way. Chris Brown, Columbus Short, the old dude that's in a bunch of movies. <laughs> I think that's, I think, I think that's Loretta Devon. I don't know. Don't quote me on it. Um. Yeah, just a bunch of people, but uh, Chris Brown, he's he's called Baby in the movie. He's the he's the baby brother of all of them. He still lives at home, and they they all come from a singing background. But their father really screwed their mother over, which they call her Madeer. Just just interesting, <laughs> but uh, so he really wants to be a singer, so he kept it inside this whole time. And then all the the older brothers and sisters go out to the club. And guess who's fucking singing? Chris Brown. And he does an excellent job. I still look it up on YouTube today. That's not what it's about. It's not a singing movie. But um, it's full of drama. Like marriage drama. Parental drama. Step parent drama. Uh, kid drama. It, it's great. But the end of the movie is so heartwarming, dude. Give it a shot this Christmas. It's coming up. Jumper. Dude, if I could have superpowers. I'd want four things. I'd want, like, super strength, because that's dope, and I can do whatever I want, bust shit through. Two, ice powers. Three, telekinesis, move shit with my hand, because I always thought, like, in high school, you know, these people I didn't like, they'd be sitting, like, four tables down, and I just wish I could be, like, like, do that, and they go flying out of their fucking seat, so I'd love to do that. And then four, teleportation. This movie's so sick, and I didn't even think about, like, how you would catch teleportation and they do it really good in this like they they have this uh electric cable you know what i mean shoots like 10,000 watts of electricity and wraps around their body so that they can't jump which is teleportation in this movie um and he 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 ran away from home uh through because of a trauma trauma accident at high school and his dad never really gave a shit about him and his mom was gone so he left flew to new york and um started working on these powers and uh he ends up getting them down he robs like god only knows how many banks and and then you know obviously the bad guys started coming after him yo by the way his mama is not very cool she's not a very nice lady all right here's the business here's the business power this is one through three i've seen every single episode of, of all of them including the recent uh episode number one on ghost book two Ghost, I'm ride or die for you, bro. I got you to the end. Yo, I love Tommy, too, but I'm rocking with my man Ghost, and I still don't believe... Well, spoiler alert. Spoiler alert. Right there. I still... I'll give you a couple seconds. I still don't believe that he's dead. <laughs> I think I think it's, it's going to work out. And if it doesn't, uh, I'm going to email Courtney Kemp, and, uh... Actually, that's probably not the best idea. I'm not going to do that. Yo, this show's about uh, gangsters, drugs, uh, kingpins, uh, jail, killing people. It's literally the best show on TV. This, Altered Carbon. <sighs> that's all I got right now. But this and Altered Carbon are my top favorite shows right now. Check this out. Stars, for real. It's worth it. The Drop. Let me tell you something about this movie. It's very, unless you're like a fan of cinema and like really want to go deep into a movie and watch it and feel it and go from the actor's standpoint and, uh, and the director's standpoint, producers, all that, this is a very dull movie until you get to the end. But let me tell you something, I like all that stuff, so I'll watch the movie and, and fucking analyze the shit out of it. The last... <laughs> Dude, seriously, the whole movie's like mellow as shit, and you're like, yo, this is like, this is supposed to be like a drug movie, you know, like, you know, some sort of thing like that. Not until the last fucking three minutes of this movie did shit pop off, and I'm I'm not even gonna tell you, dude. If you want if you want to watch this movie and really analyze and break it down, or just watch a really good drama film, watch this because and make it to the last three minutes. I'm telling you. It will shock the shit out of you. The drop. Alright. 
all time on one of my all time favorites right here, Pluto Nash, Eddie Murphy. By the way, Eddie Murphy used to be my favorite actor in the whole wide world, favorite comedian in the whole wide world. And you know, people get old, they do their own thing, they make their own way. And you know, he stopped doing comedy, he made a couple bad movies in between. Um, like the one where he's like, he's he shrunk. Like, honey, I shrunk the kids type thing. No, I don't like that one. And he's like in his own brain. I didn't get that. And uh, A Thousand Words was okay. It was okay. You know, but this movie in his prime was a great movie. Uh, so humans figured out a way to live on the moon and earth and transfer back and forth and shit. Like a plane ticket to another country or continent. And, uh, and so he lives on the moon. And he's like a... I believe like a heist man. I haven't seen this in so long, but I know the gist of it. But he's like a, a heist guy, and uh, he's really well known. He's like a gambler, and he's he's um, well, he's not a gambler. I won't get to that. But but uh, sorry, camera was rolling out. Anyway, he's uh, really well known in the criminal world. But what you don't know is he actually has a clone. So, and this movie never really describes to you how far in the future this was supposed to be. Um, but it's very entertaining. They got robots that look like humans, uh, which are very, they're pretty entertaining in themselves. And uh, he ends up getting in trouble like all the heroes do, all the characters. And then he finds his, his clone that's been like living his ultimate dream life. And uh, just watch it from there, Pluto Nash. Bruce Almighty. Let me tell you something about this movie, though. Actually, I just found out that Jim Carrey, so he, he signed a contract to work on this movie, but at the same time, the directors and producers of Pirates of the Caribbean, Jim Carrey was their first choice to play uh, Jack uh, Captain Jack Sparrow. But because of conf, uh, contra contract, Jesus, I can't speak, conflicts, he had to turn down the role, which kind of worked out because I heard Jim Carrey don't like doing like franchises and stuff like that anyway. But this is a classic movie. Morgan Freeman as God is ah, just beautiful. I loved it. And the, the comedy is great. I love that Jennifer Aniston was in this movie as Jim Carrey's Bruce's uh, girlfriend. It makes for a great dynamic between those two actors. Um... Just great over movie, man. He he pulls a monkey out the dude's butt. That's hilarious. Bruce Almighty. Endgame. Do I really need to say much more? Seriously. Like, it's Endgame. Fucking years and years of movies that I've been watching literally since Iron Man 1. I remember sitting in the, se uh, the theater with my best friend on his birthday watching The Incredible Hulk with Edward Norton. Which, I, dude, come on, man. You... <laughs> but Endgame was incredible. It was a great way to wrap up. I'm glad that Thanos got his ass kicked. And, uh, you know, the head came off. And Thor was like, I went for the head. I love that. <laughs> Fast Five. Greatest one in the franchise, in my opinion. I don't know how this next one's going to be. Like, seriously, you know how many people come up to me and are all like, dude, they have to go to space in the 10th in the film. Like, there's no other way to make it more extreme than that. In the trailer... Dom hits the turbo, like runs over this bridge mount, and swings to another fucking island. Dude, I know that they like to use a little bit of tactical information, scientific information to pull these things off. You only have so many chances, though. Like, as a as a human being, you can't get that lucky. Like, you bring it down. Like, make it a family movie. Like, bring it back to the roots. You know what I'm saying? Um, this was this was the last I felt like family oriented Fast and Furious. I, I really did. I like I like all the Fast and Furiouses, and I, I'm glad that they progressively get better and entertaining. But this was like this this felt like a Fast and Furious film best one king kong versus godzilla what i mean by that is dwayne the rock johnson versus vin diesel and obviously my man vin kicks his ass no disrespect dwayne <laughs> i'm just saying i i wanted that to happen i didn't really like your character because you were a dick but i love you bench warmers this is a great movie 
this is a great movie. Uh, you got the Napoleon Dynamite guy. I can't remember his name. He's also in a really good movie called uh, um, School for Scoundrels. That's a really good one. That one's funny too. And then you got uh, yeah, what is his name? Rob Schneider. That's his name. Yeah. And then David Spade. <laughs> Dude. So he plays like a you know athlete that he was a bully and then he tries not to be a bully as an adult. And then he's like the, the scared of everything nerd dude. And he's got a brother. God, I don't remember his brother's what his brother's name uh, either. But he's like albino, so he's scared of the sun. That's hilarious. And then David Spade's like the... He's like... You know he reminds me of? The, the chubby, sarcastic kid. Because, like, he's trying to hide his feelings. And so he's always trying to make jokes and be sarcastic. And uh, that's, that's what he reminds me of. Bench one. And my boy Pat, he's gonna give me shit about this, but this is this is the best Total Recall, and let me explain to you why. Because I haven't seen the original Total Recall, but nothing you can tell me is gonna convince me that that movie is better than this one. This movie is gangster. If you know Arnold Schwarzenegger's Total Recall, you know what this is based off of. It's just a modern day version and a better one, in my opinion. Hitch, six six to eight times a year, man great freaking movie great freaking movie i love this movie will smith does an excellent job he's a dating consultant keeps it under wraps he's uh it's like a secret business basically a bunch of women are all mad at him because they're they, they feel like he's giving men the upper advantage in dating which is not true he's just trying to help dudes that can't get dates with girls that they want to get dates with accomplish that goal what's wrong with that i don't see nothing wrong with that <laughs> so uh, he ends up working with uh, Ke uh, Kevin, 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 shit. Why, why am I forgetting his name? That's ridiculous. Kevin James, thank you. I apologize, sir. You did a fantastic job in this movie. And... Uh, I don't know how true this is, but I heard this was your fe first feature film, like film. Now, I know you, the King of the Hills and all that, but, um, or King of the Queens, sorry. But I didn't know, or and I still don't know if this was your first feature film, but spectacular job, dude. Uh, he played Albert Brenneman, and he's trying to get <laughs> a date with Allegra Cole, which is like a Fortune 500 chick that's dating like a prince or something. And they broke up, and now Hitch has to get Albert the unlikely date to date a five, Fortune 500 company girl. Works out pretty well, I must say. Hitch. All right, guys, we got two more, and then I'll make it sweet. Arrow. Now, this is the sixth season, but I have been watching this show since the first episode, and my sign officially fell. <laughs> But this is a great uh, great show. I started it with my mom. I think it was like in 2000. Shit, that was eight years ago. 2012, 2013 or something like that. Um, let me tell you something. The thing with series, and especially with superhero series, is you really have to be original. You really have to be fresh because it can get like a little off track and that, I think that's what happened around season four season five when the whole new team got introduced it was really hard to like grasp that but as the show went on and progressed and this ridiculous multi-version multi-universe stuff I, I just I'm not a fan that I have to watch each individual episode to understand what happens back in Arrow or back in Flash that's frustrating but um it wouldn't have started without this guy right here, man. Stephen Emil. Stephen Emil. Come on, man. He is Oliver Queen. No disrespect to the Smallville Oliver Queen, because he was my favorite original one at the beginning, before that show started. And to finish it off, we got the rundown. Dwayne the Rock Johnson. This is this is stellar, dude. Stellar. I, I like I like the way it's shot. It's very green. It's very vibrant. It's very uh, saturated contrast. I guess you should you could say uh, the filmography of it, right? Um, 
Dwayne The Rock Johnson is, and I'm only saying that because uh, this, that's what he still went by here. Um, I know he doesn't want to be called the Rock Dwayne The Rock Johnson anymore, but he's a bounty hunter, like boss dude, you know, like big bodyguard dude. And like seriously, the first five minutes of the film, he's like kicking like six NFL players' asses, dude, like smashing them into walls and hitting them with trays in in a nightclub, which I'm sure is hard to film, but it was great. Then he meets this guy's dad who tells him to go hunt him down and he's in Brazil trying to find this magical uh, relic that the people have been praying for and worshipping for years and it got hidden and all this crap. And uh, it makes for another buddy good uh, buddy cop duo. Um, I really like this one. And um, Alright movie fanatics. Yo, thanks for coming back. I appreciate y'all. If uh, you guys like this video, I'm happy to do more in the in the future. Um, this was just like 20 movies or so that I really enjoy. All of my collection I enjoy, guys, but there's certain movies that stick out to me when I see them. So I appreciate y'all being here to let me express my passion to you. And uh, until next time, baby.